Hello and welcome to the Red Zone viewers. This week we'll be talking about Shovel Knight, which is a game I can really dig. Yeah, alright. Shovel Knight is a 2D, retro-inspired, action-packed, platforming game developed by Yacht Club Games and released on the Wii U and 3DS eShops on June 26th. Shovel Knight takes place in a medieval setting where Shovel Knight, our hero, and his companion, Shield Knight, used to roam the land as the fiercest of warriors. But one day, when Shield Knight was locked away in a dark tower, Shovel Knight just lost his want for shoveling, I suppose. He went into a, a life of, of solitude, a, a recluse, if you will. But now, an evil enchantress is here to wreak havoc on the land with her order of no quarter, and it's up to our hero, Shovel Knight, to take up the shoveling once more. Shovel Knight's retro-inspired visuals look the way many of us may overly fondly remember NES or SNES games looking back in the day, but in reality, this game looks much better than either of those two consoles were ever likely capable of putting out. Likewise, the gameplay is also retro-inspired, taking elements from Super Mario Bros. 3, The Legend of Zelda, uh, Castlevania, but the most obvious and most influential, well, influence, was obviously Capcom games like DuckTales and the Mega Man series. This actually really shines through in terms of the control scheme, which are super, super tight, very precise. If you make a mistake or if you die in Shovel Knight, you know that it was your fault. You're not blaming the game for that one. And that is a good thing. Similarly, the level designs take cues from classic titles by teaching the player new abilities and new techniques through gameplay and without using tutorials. They sort of walk you through it by using the actual gameplay, if that makes sense. But don't get me wrong, I'm not saying these levels are a walk in the park or a cakewalk. In fact, quite the opposite. There were a few levels that had me dying over a dozen times before I finally figured it out. And a certain airship base level comes to mind. I think some of you will know what I mean by that. Yeah. But you know what? That's, that's okay, because Shovel Knight actually has an ingenious life system. Instead of just losing a life every time you die, you actually lose a little bit of the treasure you've been collecting throughout the level. And when you restart, you have the option of collecting this treasure and continuing on without any real penalty other than a loss of time. However, if you die a second time before you collect the treasure from your first death, it's gone forever. And if you run out of treasure, it's game over. Now, luckily, Shovel Knight also has a rather brilliant checkpoint system. There are obviously checkpoints <laughs> found at various points throughout the levels. And if you die after one of these checkpoints, you'll be restarted at it, which is very helpful. It allows you to sort of focus on the most immediate task at hand, rather than worrying about memorizing the entire level over. And for more advanced players, you have the option of actually breaking these checkpoints to get the treasure hidden inside. But beware, if you do that, you run the risk of having to start the levels all over from the beginning. Of course, the character designs are just as wonderfully retro as the level designs themselves, with each enemy and boss having their own unique set of abilities related to their level, kind of like Mega Man. It, the sprites are just so, so expressive and, and lively, I, I really had fun with it. Oh, but don't worry, unlike Mega Man, new bosses or defeating bosses, I should say, won't result in giving you a new ability. Instead, you'll find, or should I say, purchase, new abilities as you go through each level. You'll find them usually about halfway through, and then you can use them, or not if you don't want to, to complete the rest of the level and defeat the boss. It has sort of a, a Zelda feel to it, and that's awesome. The music is another area where Shovel Knight really shines through. This game has some of the best chiptune tracks you're likely to ever hear in a video game. And, to make things better, you can play these tracks anytime via an unlockable jukebox type feature by visiting a bard in one of the game's towns. Having a classy dinner party? Need some music to go along? Boom. Shovel Knight's got you covered. What? You've never had a classy chiptune dinner party before? You're missing out. So Shovel Knight is a game that looks great feels great, plays great, and sounds great. I mean, what more could we ask for from a retro-inspired platformer? Well, hold your horses, because Yacht Club Games 
actually has more content on the way for this one. Now, I'm not sure exactly what's coming, but expect some DLC in the future. Now look, I know what a lot of you might be thinking. Shovel Knight received a ton of positive hype on its release. I mean, like, if you took all the positive reviews and sound bites about this game and put them on a scale, you would literally have a metric ton of hype. And a lot of you might think that I'm just jumping on the bandwagon with this one, but I have to tell you, this game really is as good as it sounds. It actually lives up to all of this hype, in my opinion. In my opinion. Everything Shovel Knight does, it does well. I think I have no choice but to give Shovel Knight a 10 out of 10. So there you have it, guys. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Shovel Knight, if this is a game that you might dig. And in the meantime, stay in the zone.